want a second look. Yeah. There's something about this one, isn't there? Familiar somehow. We think we're stuck in a specific fragment of time that we've been repeating that same fragment over and over again. But the flirting's over, sir. Look, Daddy's had enough. Hello and welcome to You've Seen It Before, TV Reviews of Connections in Mind. Daredevil has released its third season onto Netflix, and it once again stars Charlie Cox as Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil, and, and features the return of Vincent D'Onofrio as Wilson Fisk, a.k.a. Kingpin, and this, takes, this season takes place a couple of months after the events of The Defenders, in which... Spo uh, mild spoilers to the defenders. Matt Murdock is presumed dead after the collapse of an off of a office building onto an underground cavern where he was last seen, and he had to stay behind in order to ensure the collapse of this building stopped the hand, the uh, the enemy that seen in the last two seasons of Daredevil, and this time we see um, Daredevil is. Grievously injured after the events of the, of the Defenders, uh, everyone presumes him dead, and Wilson Fisk is uh, leveraging his way uh, back into a position of power in Hell's Kitchen with help from the FBI. And we also see one FBI agent in particular uh, find himself under the sway of Wilson Fisk, and he will eventually uh, he will eventually become the Daredevil villain known as Bullseye. And it's up to Matt Murdock, uh, Karen Page, and Foggy Nelson to stop Kingpin from assert, uh, re re asserting himself into Hell's Kitchen, and uh, as well as stopping um, point, uh, Bullseye from sullying the good name of Daredevil. Now, this video review will contain spoilers, for the third season of Daredevil, as well as certain other films and TV series, there will be a full list in the description below. However, if you want to, uh, if you have not finished Daredevil season three yet, or have seen any of the films and TV series listed below, and want to wait until you have, skip to this uh, point in the video, and then come back later when you're done to uh, to go over my analysis. I will not be doing spoilers of my final thoughts. In this, uh, in this review. So with these things in mind, though, let us begin. So the big conflict that takes place within uh, Matt Murdock himself for the first about third of the season is the fact that he's trying to retrain himself after the events of The Defenders. He was badly injured, and his hearing is, um, is d damaged, and he can't really navigate very well. He's essentially having to retrain himself to become Daredevil again, and at first he doesn't really know that he wants to be Dare, uh, Daredevil again, but events in, season, in the season force him to retrain himself and take over the mantle of Daredevil once again, especially when um, the FBI agent who will become Bullseye dresses up as Daredevil in order to sully his good name and is killing people on orders from Wilson Fisk at this point. Um, this is very reminiscent to the events of The Dark Knight Rises, in which uh, Batman is grievously injured in, um, in, by his battle with Bane, and he is flung into this uh, pit, uh, prison pit, uh, in a foreign country, and he's having to retrain himself in order to get out of the pit and get back to Gotham, where Bane has taken over, and people are his... That, uh, Bruce Wayne cares about are dying, and he has to uh, take, uh, retrain his body and recover from his injuries in order to uh, re resume the mantle of Batman and take and take on uh, Bane and save Gotham at that point. Also, a brief little uh, uh, parallel between Daredevil season three and The Dark Knight Rises, in which um, near the end of the season, during the climactic battle between um, Daredevil, uh, Agent Poindexter, who will be Bullseye, uh, uh, by season's end, and Wilson Fisk, uh, Fisk actually is, um, attacks, uh, Bullseye, 
since Poindexter has a change of heart uh, as to um, his allegiance to Kingpin, and Kingpin actually fling, uh, crashes uh, Bullseye into a wall and breaks his back. So, and this is reminiscent to when Bane breaks the back of Bruce Wayne as Batman, and he's having to recover from that injury. However, it's a little more serious with that uh, tenuous connection, but an interesting comparison nonetheless there. Also, Daredevil Season 3 features a case of uh, mistaken identity, or an identity being sullied by an alternate personality. Uh, specifically, Agent Poindexter of the FBI is convinced by Wilson Fisk to use a copy of Daredevil's red suit to uh, commit murders and blame them on Daredevil. And uh, Matt Murdock is forced to, uh, to use his original uh, black mask uh, outfit in, in order to combat uh, Poindexter in the Daredevil uh, suit. And there are battles where the two, dare, the two daredevils are fighting one another, and it's a case of red suit versus black suit at that point. And this reminded me a lot of Spider-Man Three, in which um, uh, Peter Parker assumes the mantle of black suit Spider-Man, and he's committing. Uh, he's still doing hero work, but he's being much more brutal than he would normally. And he actually ended up kill, uh, killing. Um, Sandman, or at least he thought he did, and uh, by the end of the movie, um, Peter Parker has uh, renounced the black suit, which was Venom at this point, but uh, Venom comes back uh, in the form of Eddie Brock uh, as his host, and people think that he's the black suit Spider-Man, but then uh, Peter Parker resumes uh, his traditional red and blue suited Spider-Man uh, outfit, and then he has to battle his black suit persona, pretty much. So there's an interesting comparison there. So finally, in Daredevil Season 3, we see, for about the first half of the season, um, Matt Murdock is hallucinating, or at least we see a visual representation of his darker desires uh, manifesting themselves in the form of Kingpin. And also, uh, we see an inner monologue represented visually between Matt Murdock and his late father um, as uh, Matt Murdock is debating the, um, his desire to do good with his darker ambitions with um, Kingpin tempting uh, his, his representation of Kingpin tempting him to accept the necessity of killing the real Wilson Fisk as the only way of stopping him but he's being reined back by his desire not to kill but also his, uh, his logic saying that it might be the only way to actually truly stop Wilson Fisk, even uh, because in prison he might not actually uh, be fully reined in at that point. Um, this is similar, in fact, to an episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine called Field of Fire, in which the character of Esri Dax has to call upon a um, previous host's former uh, experience namely Duran, who was a murderer um, before he was killed, and but his memories are part of Esri. And during the course of this episode, she is having a visual um, uh, duel between aspects of herself, her good nature and this darker part of her, as she hunts a serial killer. And she doesn't want them, and these, this part of her personality is tempting her to go further and actually kill but her a good part is also rating in, so we get to see this uh, duality of her play out visually. Um, I've also made this comparison, uh, and it actually works better more prominently um, as a comparison from the third season of Daredevil to the second season of Jessica Jones. That's right, we saw this um, in the episode of Jessica Jones season two, where she hallucinates the uh, the, bit, the image of the late Kilgrave. Um, as she has this um, this inner du uh, inner uh, debate with herself, and she, this manifests as an image of Kilgrave, who is uh, debating Jessica Jones as to between her desire to do right and her darker desires, and she is being tempted, uh, dueling herself, and she's being tempted to do dark, and. This happens in only one episode, but the fact that this uh, sort of hallucination 
the dual uh, dual of personality aspects and personality in a superhero with a Netflix Marvel series, there was a more prominent comparison to be made between this uh, that earlier episode uh, season of Jessica Jones and then this current season of Daredevil. And I just found that to be an uh, interesting comparison and instance of they're, maybe, they're repeating themselves more and more as time goes on with these series. So there you have it. There's my uh, analysis of Daredevil Season 3, comparing it to things that have come before. Um, if you skipped to this point in the video, um, I can assure you there will be no spoilers going forward from this point on. Um, now, the point, the, after all this is being said, the question is, should you see Daredevil Season 3? I would say absolutely. It is a solid season of Netflix Marvel television. Um, I would say if I were to rank the three seasons of Daredevil so far, I would say it's, prob it's better than the first season, but it's not quite as good as the second season, in my opinion. Um, I had also, uh, in my review of uh, Iron Fist Season 2, I had said that since, because they made the decision to reduce it, the number of episodes to only 10, I thought that they were able to tell a much tighter story with much less filler in that, uh, in that uh, season. And because Daredevil Season 3 is, also, is a 13-episode season, I have to say it does fall back into that uh, trap of having filler in, uh, in the episodes, especially in right around episodes uh, 8 and 9 and 10. Um, 10 not so much, because that is the obligatory flashback episode, and while it is good for the uh, episode that it is as a standalone episode, I'd say for the subject, the character that it goes into, and, the sub and um, uh, in, in impact on the whole for the season as it goes from that point on, I think that that flashback episode was on the whole unnecessary. Uh, still a good episode, but again, unnecessary for the season itself. Um, I would say the highlights of this uh, season is definitely visit D'Onofrio as Kingpin and his uh, the way that his actions interact with um, Matt Murdock's uh, Daredevil. Um, I think that that dynamic worked really well in season one and works even better in this season, especially since we are not going as deep into, um, really not very deep at all into uh, Kingpin's motivations and his backstory. They did all that in season one, and now he's able to be a fully fledged bad guy against um, against Daredevil. So we get to see that dynamic and not have it bogged down in his backstory so much, and that works really well in this season. Um, if there are going to be any negatives of this the movie uh, this season, I would say. Uh, again, the filler def and the pacing definitely lags in that uh, middle middle to end part. It definitely picks up again in episode 12 and 13. Um, and it just doesn't really need to, it falls into that trap of those earlier net, uh, uh, Netflix series that um, it has that filler and that pacing does drag. And especially, and also the character of uh, Ancient Poindexter of the FBI, who um, this isn't really a spoiler. It's kind of uh, established early on that he is going. He is the this series equi uh, the representation of the uh, Marvel character Bullseye, um, last seen in the film version of Daredevil, played by Colin Farrell. And he's good as the character, but uh, the way he's established, um, they don't really explain as much as I would have liked, and. Um, I think that could have been improved. Also, the relationship between um, Karen and um, Matt Murdock, um, I feel like that could have been handled better, especially given the events of uh, the Defenders and the fallout from that. Um, I just think that the way things played out in this film, uh, this season felt kind of rushed and artificial. Um, and uh, But other than that, that this is a solid season of uh, Daredevil, and it is perfectly watchable. And the visuals always are stunning. And there's another great um, hallway scene, which is even better because they actually did do it all in one take. The rest didn't have to like stitch it all together to make uh, make it look like one take. Or uh, and 
it actually is more impressive that way, and that's a great action scene. I think that's in episode seven or eight. I can't remember now, but um, it's definitely worth your time. Definitely check it out. And as far as an ending goes, again, I won't spoil anything, but um, the way th- uh, things have been going with Netflix these days, especially with the way they're trimming their series and in light of the uh, their uh, mar- their life thing with uh, Marvel. Now that Disney is getting all their things in order in their own streaming service, um, the fact that they canceled um, Luke Cage and Iron Fist, if they have to cancel Daredevil at this stage, I would say it's a fair end for Daredevil, but I think it would be a shame if we ended it here, because I think there's more to be done with this character, and Charlie Cox does an amazing job at Matt Murdock, and I'd just love to see more of it. But if they had to cancel it here, I'd say it'd be fine. Um... Yeah, those are my thoughts of Daredevil Season 3. Um, if you've seen it, what do you think of it? Let me know in the comments down below, or if I missed anything in my analysis, point, uh, uh, point stuff out to me. I, I will readily admit when I don't know uh, any everything. So, thank you all for watching as well. Um, I appreciate whatever audience I can get. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And... Yeah, just keep on coming back. I'll have more stuff in the coming days. And just remember, there's nothing new under the sun. And yes, you have seen it before.